I just got back from TwitchCon last night. I had an amazing time, still struggling with the jet lag, but I wanted to get a video up talking about some of the new features that Twitch have announced coming to their platform in the next six months. I think there's some really exciting stuff in here, both for streamers and for viewers of Twitch. Uh, so I wanted to get an upload out as soon as I got back. So this is that video. If you see me looking across at my phone during this video, that's purely just because I wrote down a load of notes actually as the keynote was happening live at TwitchCon. So I wanna make sure that I don't miss any of the features or any of the nuances around the features. So let's just dive straight in with the ad experience improvements. From the next two weeks, affiliates are also gonna be able to earn a share of advertiser revenue, which means that when an advert runs on your channel or if you run it and you are an affiliate, you will make a share of that. Uh, money that Twitch is making from the advert. This previously just used to be for partners only, uh, but starting in the next two weeks, that's also gonna be available for affiliates. Pairing with that, they are no longer gonna be showing adverts on non-affiliated or non-partnered streams. So if you are a viewer and you're watching a stream and that stream runs an advert, you know that that streamer is making uh, some money from that advert running. Affiliates and partners will also have the option to be able to disable pre-roll adverts on their channel. Uh, by running regular ad breaks. Now it's up for discussion as to how regular this ad break needs to be to disable these pre-roll adverts, but uh, the one screenshot that I've seen shows that it's disabled uh, for about 20 minutes after running a, an advert in their stream. So this is particularly good for new people arriving at streams. They shouldn't get a pre-roll every single time. One of the really cool updates in the ad experience is that they are gonna be introducing something called picture by picture, very similar to picture in picture if you've ever worked with video before. But basically what's gonna happen is when, as a streamer, you run an advert, your stream actually does not cut to the advert. Instead, your stream will go up into the top corner above the chat and then the advert will play in the video's place. This just means that the viewers don't actually ever break away from your stream. Your stream just goes up into the top corner so they can see that they're not missing anything and they can still see what's happening in your stream whilst the advert runs. They've also finally fixed the audio levels of adverts, they've normalized them. So you should no longer as a viewer have the experience where you're watching a streamer at sort of a medium volume and all of a sudden you get a super loud advert that seems to have come out of nowhere. Uh, they have now apparently normalized all advert volumes and they will be normalized with the actual streamer that you're watching. The final improvement in terms of adverts is that you should as a streamer eventually be able to see a estimated payout for running an advert. So if you're a larger streamer with a big audience, um, before running an advert, you should be able to see an estimate as to how much running an advert would, would make you uh, based on the number of views you've got and their demographic. The second major update that Twitch announced at TwitchCon is the new channel pages. Now, some of these updates have already gone live, but as you can see from the screenshot, there's still a long way to go. There are gonna be sections where you as a streamer can add information about yourself. You can add all your social media links there. You can even put your schedule up without needing a third party extension so people can come to your channel and see what you're streaming on certain days and what time you're gonna be going live. You can even upload a channel trailer, something similar to what you've been able to do on YouTube. So when people arrive at your channel and you're not even live, they can see sort of a short one to two minute what you're all about video. This should remove the need to have so many panels below your stream since you're gonna be able to include about me information, social media links, your schedule, all actually into your channel page. So. Uh, these changes are apparently coming later next year. No real update as to when exactly that will be. The third update that we'll talk about is Mod View, which is a new channel layout basically just for moderators. So it'll allow them to take actions based on the viewers or the people talking in chat in your channel much, much easier. Um, things like being able to see all the messages that are flagged by auto mod or see which other moderators are online or even just list the moderator actions that have been taken on the channel recently. Uh, you can add all of these kind of things and sort of choose the layout yourself as a moderator. Now the mod view is going to be available from spring 2020, so still a little while off on that. Next up, we have the new creator dashboard. Now this is an update to the current creator dashboard, which isn't exactly the most easy to use thing ever. This uh, new creator dashboard will allow you to be able to customize exactly what buttons and controls you want on your dashboard whilst you are live. So much bigger buttons and options to clip recent uh, moments from your stream or run adverts or change chat mode. All these kind of things should be much easier to do and you can actually customize exactly which buttons you want available for yourself as a creator. There'll also apparently be some new tips, uh, sort of a stream assistant for new streamers, to sort of guide you through what all of these controls can do. Uh, 
uh, and the new creator dashboard is apparently launching in October. The fifth update that we're gonna be talking about is the new Twitch studio. Uh, if you followed me on Twitter or you follow Twitch on Twitter, you should have seen that they announced uh, their own streaming software a couple of months ago. I still haven't been able to test it, unfortunately, but they did have um, some uh, ability to test it at TwitchCon. Apparently the new Twitch studio is gonna be really simple to set up for new streamers. It's gonna have some easy to use templates where you can customize things like the colors, uh, as well as the layout of certain things in your stream. Uh, Twitch studio is gonna be launching in November. I'm not sure if that's full launch or if it's just gonna be open access from November, uh, still during testing, but it certainly looks like a useful tool for new streamers. Now, if you are a heavy watcher of Twitch and you watch some of the biggest streamers, you might have seen this next feature uh, already sort of roll out to some of the bigger channels. It's called Channel Points, and it's essentially a way for affiliates and partners to be able to reward loyal customers of their community, people that are watching their stream often, not necessarily the people that are subscribing and things like that, but you can actually base certain rewards on watch time. So you can actually choose what you want uh, your viewers to be able to unlock uh, with actions like watch time. So they could maybe unlock some tier one emotes or highlight a message to you or reward the, the viewer in some way as a streamer based on something as simple as them watching your stream. Now, although this has been rolled out for some bigger channels for a bit of time whilst they've been testing it, it's gonna be coming to all affiliates and partners from January. The next thing we'll talk about is the Twitch rebranding that went on. It wasn't actually really announced at TwitchCon, but it went live the day before TwitchCon started. So uh, I'm sure by now some of you have been able to experience the new update. Uh, there's a new word mark, a new glitch logo. It's only slightly changed, thankfully, since <laughs> some people literally and physically have that tattooed on their body. Um, some of the color palette has changed, so the Twitch purple has changed ever so slightly, and there's also 24 new colors in their palette. So they're trying to move away from just a purely purple design aesthetic and actually give some level of customization to the creator. For example, now when you mouse over somebody's thumbnail preview of their live stream, uh, the, the video preview sort of moves up and to the right slightly and you get a colored border uh, of your stream. And you as the streamer can customize and choose what that color looks like. So you can have some kind of brand aesthetic applied to your thumbnails. Um, that's called the creator color. Apparently it can be found in your settings. Uh, it shows up in thumbnails, browse pages, and even message notifications in chat. So those new features along with a new font that you might have seen in Twitch chat, uh, just uh, sort of the direction that Twitch are taking their rebranding. So I think we're on feature number eight now, and that is polls that Twitch have announced. So you can actually ask your audience questions whilst you are live from your stream, and it's integrated directly into the chat. So usually people were using other extensions or something like straw poll for this. Now it's gonna be directly implemented into your chat. You can ask your viewers questions and they can vote on it within a certain time limit. Uh, you also have some options to be able to allow for subscribers uh, to have a higher vote count so their votes count double or something like that. I believe you'll also be able to um, disable that. I'm sure you will be able to if you want to run just a completely fair poll on your chat. Uh, and like I said, it's for affiliates and partners and it's launching in October. Along with polls, they announced something called Hype Train. This is going to allow uh, viewers to use bits and subs to get a fun and rewarding community celebration. I don't know exactly what this means at the moment. It's sort of a way to encourage your viewers to um, sort of support the channel all within a certain time limit to in some way unlock a fun and rewarding celebration. I'm not sure what that means exactly, if it's gonna allow for um, certain emotes to be used or if it's going to do something actually on your stream. I'm not completely sure, but uh, they haven't released much information about this other than one quick image about the hype train. The hype train we don't have a month for, but apparently all of those updates are coming later this year. The final update that we're gonna talk about is that subscriptions are now available on iPhones and iPads, so iOS. Um, so many people now are watching streams from their phones, so if you're using an iOS device, you can now support your favorite streamers by subscribing directly from your phone. A minor update, nothing to do with the Twitch platform that they also announced is that the new TwitchCon dates have been announced. Uh, TwitchCon in Europe will be taking place in Amsterdam, May the 2nd, 3rd, and TwitchCon in San Diego next year will be September the 25th to 27th. So it's gonna be in San Diego. I imagine the exact same convention center is a really great venue this year. Um, I've heard rumors that they've actually got a three-year deal there. So not only 2020, but also 2021 will be in San Diego. We don't have the dates for that year but for next year, it'll be the 25th to the 27th. So if you wanna start looking at hotels and flights a year in advance, you can do. So I appreciate that we rattled through that at quite a pace, but I wanted to get a quick update video out 
uh, with all of the new features that Twitch have announced, exactly like I did last year. Uh, that video seemed to do pretty well, so I just wanted to share that with you in case you didn't see the keynote or you weren't following Twitch on social media. Finally, I wanna give a massive thanks to everybody that I met at TwitchCon this year. It's just the most unreal experience being able to walk around and meet so many people from the community. So thank you if you stopped me on the floor, if you came to either of the events that I had at Elgato or at Streamlabs, uh, I really appreciate it. If you are new to the Gaming Careers YouTube channel, I would highly recommend checking out the rest of our content that we have loads of live streaming guides for you if you are just getting started or if you've been at it for a while. Uh, definitely hit the notification bell so that you don't miss an upload. And a final thanks to my patrons this month who have helped support the channel. I really appreciate all the support. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.